Hi, welcome to the second video in the Building Message Driven Systems playlist. Uh, we're looking now at introduction to topics and subscriptions. So to recap our last video, where we just learned about message brokers and message queues, uh, we looked at how message queue, basically like a one lane road, uh, where everything that kind of enters it has to line up, and then when the road opens at the other end, uh, they leave in the same order they entered, right? So we're talking about a first in, first out kind of structure. Uh, so we said that a message broker can have multiple different queues. Uh, we give them unique names and the sending application can send messages to that queue and they line up in that queue and then receiving applications can connect to those queues and, and receive the messages from them and they'll come in the same order they were sent. Another concept we covered was the idea of competing consumers. Uh, and so this is when we've got uh, basically one queue effectively, uh, different people might be sending to that queue, but the messages are lining up in there and then more than one receiving application connects to the queue to get messages. And what happens is uh, the message broker distributes the messages out to the different consumers, but it gives each one of them a different message. So the first person that connects to, to receive a message gets the first message and then the next application that connects to receive it gets the message behind that. And so they get given out in turn. But sometimes what we wanna have is uh, more than one application be able to receive a copy of every message that gets written to a queue. So, so say we've got application one, application two, they both wanna understand what's happening, what's being published to a particular queue, uh, but they don't want every other message, they want every message. Um, so the, you know, the queue-based approach to that would be maybe we could just have two queues and then our sending applications can write to both of them. Um, but the challenge then is what if there are three consumers or four consumers or a thousand consumers you know, how many different queues would we need to have? And then what would happen if we were able to write to some of them, but our application uh, crashed or failed, or uh, the mess maybe the message broker failed or the network got interrupted before we'd finished to write to all of them, we'd have this kind of challenging, inconsistent state. Uh, so this is what topics and subscriptions are here to solve, having uh, more than one application kind of receive uh, the whole set of messages. So if we think about how that would have to work, um, what we'd want is the sending application to still be able to use a name like a queue, uh, but we'd want it, um, you know, potentially we'd want that to kind of describe the type of message. So we might say the name is like customer update or something like that. Uh, and then we would want the broker to put that into a concept like a queue, but we kind of want one for every application. Uh, so the different sending applications are sending messages in uh, to the name the way they did before with the queue, but the broker is kind of duplicating those and, and writing them to the, like two separate queues for us effectively. That's what we'd be aiming for. And so that's what we kind of get with topic subscription. So that, that name that you send to, that's what we call a topic. And then those different queues that the messages end up getting written to, those are subscriptions. So that's really what topics and subscriptions means. Uh, and we can still do competing consumers on this. So subscriptions are effectively just like queues but they're kind of queues on the receiving side rather than on the sending side. Uh, so we can still do competing consumers. As we see here in this example, sending applications are sending messages to the customer updated topic again. They're going into these two different subscriptions. And here we've got two copies of receiving application one connected to the same subscription. And when that happens, when you get two applications get to the same subscription, they will act like competing consumers on a queue. And then we've got receiving application two here uh, connected to its own subscription, and that's gonna get a copy of every message that comes in. So the two appli receiving application ones will take kind of every other message effectively, and receiving application two will get, will get a copy of uh, every message. And so we use this approach, this topics and subscriptions, as the basis for a kind of architecture pattern we call publish and subscribe, or PubSub for short. Uh, and so PubSub is its pattern to decouple uh, the senders and receivers of messages. And so we've already kind of had that ability before uh, what we call temporal uh, decoupling. So a, a sender and a receiver didn't have to be running at the same time. Uh, as we said before, our message broker is able to kind of store the messages up for us. So as we send messages in, uh, it doesn't matter if the receiver is running, the message broker will store them and send them on when the receiver uh, does start running again. So that's te some temporal de decoupling. But what we're able to do now is use topics and subscriptions to completely decouple them to the point that the, the sender doesn't have to know if there are any receivers or how many receivers or where the receivers are or what language they speak or whatever else. It doesn't have to know anything about the receivers. It just sends the message to the topic. And then however many uh, subscribers there are, their subscriptions will all get a copy of the message. And they're kind of the same on the other side. The, the, the receivers don't need to know who publishes to a topic. 
They just need to know that that's the topic that they're interested in receiving messages about. And so they subscribe to that topic and they'll get their own queue uh, full of all of the messages that get published to it. They don't have to worry about other applications that might be subscribed at all either. Uh, and so now we kind of get this ability, if we, if we orient our topics around the kind of business ideas like customer updated or order placed or something like that, uh, then we get this kind of business oriented uh, decoupling between our senders and our receivers of messages. Uh, it's important to note uh, that uh, not all brokers kind of work the same this way. They are generally the same uh, for a large selection of brokers. And so I've listed some out here. These ones are, are all kind of similar to each other in their the work. Solis Pub Sub Pus, uh, Azure Service Bus, um, RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, Pulsar, Google Pub Sub, uh, Amazon SQS, Amazon SNS, IBM MQ, Tibco, and there are a whole bunch more different types of uh, different kind of brands of brokers. They're all built by different people for different purposes, so they all operate like slightly differently. But this is a general approach as to how they all generally work. Uh, there are some ones that are quite different. Kafka, uh, Azure Event Hubs, and Amazon Kinesis are the ones I'm really familiar with uh, that work in what we call a distributed log type of way. So they do have topics on them, but they don't really have the kind of subscription idea. They're a little, they're they're quite different in the in the way they operate. And so uh, in the next video, we're going to look at. Uh, how do topics work in a distributed log type of broker? That'll be our next video in the series. So that's all for this video. Uh, if you like the content or found it helpful, please hit the like button for me. Uh, if you want to find out uh, more, if you want to find out more about distributed logs and, and you know reliability and all the other kind of topics in this in this series, hit the subscribe button. And if you want, hit post notifications so you get notified when when there's a new video uploaded. Uh, and then there are my social links uh, for Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, I hope this was useful and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.